I went out in the street, which was full of white-robed people. To me now, my eyes saw something that they could not see before. I saw the joy of their faces. I saw the happiness. I suddenly felt at home. I was home. I walked across the earth, and as I did so, a crack appeared along the way, and there came a roar like a thunderstorm. The leader looked to the distance, and I turned and saw the zombified tramps that had attacked us at the hospital. He's brought them with him, I heard one say. They're of him, I heard another whisper. I turned around to the leader and a group of white robed men and women and said, We outnumber them. We will kill them once and for all. But the leader looked down as if I disappointed him. Another said, We cannot kill them. If they attack us, then we may defend, but we must wait to know what they shall do. But they will kill you. I won't allow that. I ran straight towards the zombified traps as I heard one ask the leader, What did your dream say about this? The leader said, this was not there. Maybe the dream already had been fulfilled. His future I was never told. I felt that if I were to die, then at least I would die for these pious people. I grabbed, grappled with the tramps who roared and squeezed me so tight I felt the blood rush to my head. I felt the contractions of my muscle as he squashed me like a can. The cloud loomed above me, a dull, somber grey. The sun to the back of me casting my shadow, giving me the impression that this was a momentous moment. As my shadow stretched out for miles, I felt the tallness of my stature. I tried hopelessly to set myself free from these tramps. Then they let me go, and I fell to my feet. Was it all over? A test after all? <clears throat> but as I slowly lifted my head up, looming above me, <clears throat> was the fog that had caused this great calamity in the first place. It was heading straight towards us. I stood up, defiant, ready to face my death. The zombified tramps became very agitated and started to squeal like animals. It was then I noticed something strange about this crowd of zombified tramps. It was spurred on by what of one of the white-robed women had said when first seeing the tramps, that some looked human like us. When I looked, they all looked distorted, as I'd seen them before, grotesque, but now as I looked amongst them up close, I noticed some of them indeed did look normal, but possessed. Some appeared like caricatures of the evilness humans express. It was as if these were indeed like us, but somehow the bacteria from the fog had made their physical form express the internal. I turned around to see the quiet of the white-robed men and women, who were all prostrate on the floor in rows and rows, praying for God to protect them from the fog that carried the chemical weapon that had killed so many. I turned back around to the creatures and saw the fog touch the furthest one of me furthest one from me, and he squealed as blood poured out of his mouth, a white liquid. He spluttered it up, holding his stomach, screaming, his eyes bright red and bulging. He collapsed, rattling in agony. There I was, standing, the fog coming straight before me. It glistened like white hot metal, its vapours a yellow colour, with a snake-like charm it blew. Looking so innocent and yet so deadly, a thin vapour of death, I felt a tremendous energy fill my body as I stood defiant in front of the fog. I fell to my knees and placed my hands firm on the floor, my nose touching the earth as I asked God to protect me. And as I did so, I felt the coldness of the vapours pass over my weak body. I continued to brave over and over again, putting my trust in God above me. Then I heard screams from behind me, and my eyes caught behind me one white-robed man burst into flames. He jumped up and tried to start running. Then he exploded into a million dust particles, as if the fog had annihilated him. I continued to pray until, all of a sudden, it had disappeared, along with the dead corpses of the tramps. I stood up and walked to the jubilant white-robed men and women. I went straight to the leader and asked him why one of his pious men had died. He told me, there are always those who are amongst you who are not as they appear, not sincere, making a claim but do not uphold it. It is not seen by men all around him, but God above can see into the very depth of our hearts. Man may only cheat other men, never God, never him alone. I walked to the place where the tramps had been and picked up the dust of their remains which blew 
off my hand into the breeze that whistled through the air. I walked back into the crowd of jubilant robed men and women who, noticing for the first time that I was also dressed in a white robe, came and hugged me, and I felt a special kind of warmth, a human kindness that was unbeknown to me. In the distance I saw the leader of these people smiling, and he went down on his knees, and I could see him moving about as if he was crying. I rushed over, I do not know why, but I could not have him crying, and I placed my hand lovingly on his shoulder, and he turned upwards, showing his tear-stained face towards me. I wiped away his tears. He held out both of my hands and looked deep within my eyes. Your dream was right, I said. It was not my dream. God gave it to me. I had prayed the night before continuously all through the night that he might give man, especially those whose hearts were pure, but, for, but had for some reason not yet found him, to allow them one final chance. I fell asleep on my prayer mat, and then I saw your face in the dream. Then I knew my dream had been accepted. For you had turned to God, and me, he must, I am sure, have seen something in you that was worth another chance. You had the disease too, but I don't understand. My boy, there is a time when all man shall die. Our deeds shall be judged, this planet will explode, along with every planet, the sun, all will go, and then the doors of heaven and hell shall be opened and each will welcome man. And in a time hell too shall explode, and only heaven will stand in the universe's place with God Almighty in reign. Then God showed us both that we may give another chance, that we can do, still do some good, so that more can enter heaven. One week later, and I left this city, they drove me to the motorway where I had left the red bus. I hugged them goodbye, I had to say one more goodbye before I could start my new world. I got inside the red bus after pouring some petrol in the day given me, and I drove all the way back to where, for me, it had all begun, the dead city. I eventually arrived there, and each person that I met, I gave them directions to the white-robed city, for this was where man would once again rise, but this time it would be for the better. I found myself where I had to be now, the grave of my dead wife. I took a tissue out and wiped the tombstone. I knelt down by the gravel where her body lay six feet under. I miss you dearly, my love. You meant so much to me. I lost you and I think I lost a bit of myself too. But I'm better now. I found the faith that I think you always knew and yet I would not believe. Too many times I looked away when you spoke of God and I paid many hard prices for it. But now I understand, at least I understand. I feel lonely still, I, I miss you so much, but before when I was without you, my loneliness was complete. Now I can never be alone, now that I've found God. My darling, may you rest in peace, and one day now I know I will join you in heaven. A small tear trickled down my face, Behind me I imagined I felt the presence of those people I had met in the dead city. Jenny, the Overgates, Hark and Valentine, all of them. As if their ghostly presence were watching me one final time before they drifted through the ether to their place of rest. I began to remember thoughts connected with them, the things I had done, seen and so forth, as if I was carrying their burdens. I felt the need to prostrate on the ground. When I got up, I could no longer feel their presence. They were gone. I straightened my legs and walked back to the bus. I said my farewells to the dead city, my old world, and started the bus back to the city of the white rural people to start fresh, mankind's best adventure, the new world.